Hello everyone. Welcome back to Forum Chess Club. So today we are going to see an opening called uh, French Whenever. This opening French Whenever can be played by Black only when White plays King Pawn opening. So watch till end of the video because we are going to see a lot of variations out of this French Whenever. And also we are going to discuss about the advantages and disadvantages for both the sides. As I said in the beginning, this opening can be played when white plays uh, uh, king pawn opening. So before we get into the analysis, first we will see the variation. So variation is white plays e4. Uh, in response, black play e6 instead of e5. It plays e6, and now uh, white is play. White is making a pawn duo by moving to d4. Now black plays e5 and attacking the uh, e4 pawn. So for this, black is defending the e4 pawn with knight c3 and the, the variation here is black is playing bishop b4 and this opening is called as the French winner opening. So now let's analyze the board. So coming back to the uh, king pawn opening, when, when white plays e4, to defend this e4, black, the common move for a black is either playing e5 or playing c5 uh, to defend the uh, to, to define this e5 pawn at the same time, it have a control over the d4 square, center square. Uh, but again, a most common alternative for this, uh, for this, you know, e4 pawn is nothing but e6. It's a French move, uh, e6. Uh, so now, obviously, black will think of uh, making a pawn duo by making the d2 to d4. And in response to d4, obviously, it will be d5 to attack the uh, e4 pawn and also it will it will it will think of occupying the center uh, so as i said in the beginning uh, to defend this e4 pawn black will go for knight c3 uh, but let's see what, like what will happen if it go for uh, uh, exchanging the pawns so now instead of playing knight c3 if it plays e into d5 pawn takes pawn and pawn takes pawn so it, it will not give a lot of advantages for both the, both the sides so obviously white will not go for e into d5 and at the same time, it also have one more option to push the e, e pawn to e5. And again, at the moment, it will not give much significance because it will give you the, it will, it will make you the pawns as a weaker pawn. Uh, rather for black, it is a, uh, it, it is a stronger pawn. Uh, the pawn, you know, that they don't need to even look for the, def look for defensing the pawn. So it leaves you a white as a uh, weaker side. So at the moment, it is not, uh, it's not good for white to play e5, uh, but, but that's a situation like it can push it e5. So the mo most common uh, move here is knight c3. So as per the variation, uh, black will now go for bishop b4. So now, uh, you know, we can, we can see a significance of playing bishop b4. Uh, one is actually it is attacking the uh, knight and indirectly attacking the uh, e4 pawn. It's, it's, a, it's a weaker white pawn, e4. Uh, but at the same time, we have to look at the uh, strategy for uh, uh, black here because it is leaving the g pawn, g7 pawn in, in trouble. Uh, it, it will be a vulnerable, uh, you know, maybe a, a weaker pawn for black. And at the same time, if it exchanges the dark square bishop with the knight, uh, then, you know, it is actually a sacrifice. It, it's actually sacrificing the dark square bishop. Why I'm saying sacrifice here is uh, in the opening, Black has placed all the pawn in the light square. Then obviously, uh, black, uh, I mean, the, the dark square bishop has more significance, has more value than the light square bishop because it can move freely out, um, move freely out of the uh, pawn chain. Uh, but it's going to sacrifice it. Uh, so now we can see instead of black is playing bishop b4, instead of if it if it goes for an exchange pawn exchange uh, by you know d2 e4. Let's see like how it going to happen. So now if it goes for d into e4, pawn takes pawn, now it is giving a free move for white and at the same time, white can control the center uh, by moving knight into e4. So now if you look at the board, white is having a more control over the center by the pawn and knight, by placing the pawn and knight in the center. So obviously, black will not go for this d into e4. So instead, if it goes for knight f6, now comes the significance of moving your uh, e4 pawn to e5. So, so obviously black will not go for knight f6. And even in the last step which we uh, discussed, instead of going for knight c3, they can go for e5 pawn, but that moment, 
but you know in this situation if it goes for e d5 then it will not be much significant but at the same time when black plays knight f6 now you can have the significance but you can't again hold this pawn for a long time because uh, your you know, black d5 is attacking the e4 pawn so you can't hold it for long but until other otherwise there's no you know, much damage to your uh, pawn uh, structure then you you are good to hold the e4 pawn so now as per the variation black is playing bishop b4 uh, now white has uh, two three variations here uh, so the first variation is by playing uh, you know uh, a3 and attacking the uh, bishop uh, which is there in b4 square uh, but now uh, you know by playing this at the moment it, it will give you a lot of uh, structural uh, weaknesses in the queen side pawns so obviously you know white will not go for uh, a3 it is a bad move here at the moment uh, so the second variation is f3 so by playing f3 it is a very bad move for uh, white let's see why so now if now uh, black go for exchanging the pawn uh, which is d into e4 uh, so now it's a forced move for white which is f into e4 so now bishop takes knight pawn takes knight pawn takes bishop if you look at the board now if black plays queen h4 check then it, it is not just a check at the same time it is attacking the pawn in the e4 square so it will leaves white in a weaker side so obviously f3 going playing f3 is not a wise move for uh, black sorry for white so what will be the good move so now instead of holding your uh, weaker e4 pawn you can push it to e5 now so this is a good move for uh, white in response to e5 uh, black has two three variations here uh, let's see one by one so now the first variation here is what will happen if knight plays knight goes for e7 so if it knight goes for e7 then queen can develop to g4 and attack the weaker pawn which is g7 so it goes for g4 and now uh, like you know there's no other variation like it, it can go for g6 but it give you a structural damage for black so uh, knight e7 is not a good move at the moment so now it, if it goes for b6 so by by releasing the uh, uh, i mean by by moving a pawn to uh, sorry bishop to b7 and attacking the have a control over the center or else it can go for um, a6 and can exchange the light square uh, light light square bishop but again uh, the same thing will happen now it goes for uh, g8 and um, sorry queen g4 and in response it has to go for uh, g6 or or else it has it has to you know bring back the bishop to bishop f8 so obviously it's not an ideal move for <clears throat> ideal move for uh, black to play bishop uh, sorry b6 so the ideal move for black to defend the e5 is nothing but a c5 they can play ag aggressively in this move uh, to attack the uh, d4 pawn and at the same time they can defend the uh, bishop which is there in uh, b4 square so now this leaves uh, white to attack the uh, bishop to go for an exchange so uh, white will go for uh, a3 now uh, so now in response to a3 black has two variation either it can go for an exchange by by you know taking the knight or else it can defend by by moving to bishop a5 so uh, it has two variation either it can go for exchange or it can go for bishop a5 by defending themselves so now let's see like what will happen if it if you know black is uh, black will play a5 so if it goes for f5 then uh, you know white has two uh, two variations one is uh, d into c5 if it plays d into c5 it's a bad move uh, why because um, if you go for d into c5 now black will go for an exchange uh, black will take bishop into c3 and it's a check so no other option it's a forced move we have to take uh, b into uh, c3 so now they can place their queen to c7 so it will give you a damage to your weaker pawn which is c5 c5 and e5 so obviously by taking uh, c d into c5 it's not an ideal move it's not a good move so instead it can go for b4 and attack the um, bishop again so now it's a forced move they have to take c into uh, b4 now a good move for uh, white here is by placing the knight to b5 and you are going to attack and you attack and capture the weakest pawn weakest square for black which is uh, d6 so now black can defend this in two ways one is 
they can they can go for you know uh, taking the pawn bishop into a3 and it can produce an uh, open check uh, like this uh, but but this you know if if we play like this then um, we can defend it by uh, c3 or by uh, playing the bishop to uh, d2 but still you can have a control over the uh, d <coughs> d6 uh, square and one more option here one more option uh, here you know uh, uh, for black to play instead of going for uh, b bishop sorry pawn into uh, a3 it can go to bishop c7 and can uh, attack and, and you know it can defend the uh, it can defend the square uh, like i mean uh, weaker square which is d6 but again this leaves black in a um, in a situation uh, in a, a tragic situation just because queen white queen can still develop to g4 and it can attack the weaker pawn which is uh, g7 um, so obviously uh, Obviously, you no know, black will not go for um, will not will not you know defend the bishop anymore. It it, it will go for an exchange. So coming back to the uh, position, so there is no other option for black now. It has to go for exchange because by defend if it go for defense, it will leave you a bad situation for black. So obviously, it will go for an exchange now. Bishop into c3. It's a check now. It's a forced move uh, for white. It has to take the uh, black bishop with its pawn. So uh, now it's b into c3. Uh, so in response, black can think of uh, doing a kingside castle by moving the uh, uh, knight away from it. So knight e7. Uh, so as I, as I said in the beginning, white still have an option to attack uh, to attack the g7 pawn by placing the queen on uh, g4. So obviously it will go for uh, g4 to attack the uh, pawn. So now it will like we have a lot of variations for black to defend that particular uh, g7 pawn. Uh, so first could be you know it can it can place knight g6. Uh, knight can go to g6. But this is a uh, it is not a uh, good move I would say because uh, we have a, uh, we can you know we can still uh, thread the knight with the help of our uh, hutch pawn. So you can you can develop your hutch uh, hutch to uh, hutch pawn to hutch four and then you can develop to uh, hutch five. Uh, so so that you can attack the so that you can attack the knight. So ideally, it's not a good move uh, for black to play now. Uh, there's another option is playing knight f5. So if it's knight f5, then obviously you can you can you know, attack the knight with the help of your bishop to bishop d3. So again, it's not an uh, it's not a good way to uh, defend the uh, g7 pawn. Uh, or or else, you know, instead of uh, touching the knight, if it goes for g6, then it will give a structural damage for the uh, king side uh, pawn. Uh, because these are uh, these are all the weaker squares, uh, so it, it, again it's not a uh, good move. Um, then you know, uh, then the other variation is it can go to rook can go to g8 by defending the g7 pawn. Uh, but again, you know, the if it if it moves, then the the purpose of uh, you know releasing the knight is nullified. Now it can't do a castle. Uh, so what will happen if it, if it do a castle? So if it do a castle again, it is a big mess at this moment because. Your dark square bishop can come here and it can threaten uh, this again the same uh, g7 pawn and of course uh, the rook as well. It gives a lot of pressure on the king side. So obviously right now at the moment they, they will not be doing the castle, castling. Uh, so one other option, one other option is playing to queen c7 and allowing the white queen to take the uh, poison pawn which is queen into g7. Uh, so rook to g8 and mm, queen to h7. So now if you look at the board, uh, Black has actually sacrificed two uh, two pawns as a poison pawn, uh, but actually it, it it has a lot of advantages uh, on the uh, white king side pawn attack. Uh, so maybe it can play this. Uh, no, in this in this position, black can play uh, this poison pawn trap. Hope you learn something out of this uh, opening. So stay tuned. I will I will come back with another opening. Thank you for watching.